part five of state of the art underwater carp fishing has been filmed in more of a documentary style so what I'm going to do now is set the scene a little bit for you. Now Wellington Country Park is a 35 acre gravel pit in Reading, um, it's a syndicate venue and we've been kindly allowed on there at the end of April, beginning of May to fish one area of the lake. There are anglers still fishing around the lake and we had one swim roped off for us probably a week in advance of when we started to film. The bailiffs were also baiting that spot for us just for about a week in advance of making the film in order to draw fish into the area because that area of the lake isn't generally any good until the weather warms up and we hadn't had a particularly good April and the fish weren't visiting that area so fortunately the bait going in there did bring the fish in after a few days but to begin with they weren't coming in at all and the bait was just sitting there day after day and we really didn't think that we were going to get anything like this sort of footage when we actually put the cameras in the water. As always, we had loads of problems with getting the camera in the water. I actually went to the chute three days in advance, laid all the cable in the water, so all we had to do was connect up the cameras. And as is always the case, we had problems and the cameras weren't working properly, we weren't getting the correct signal. During all of this, we've got fish of this sort of size and bigger swimming around the spot, literally waiting to be filmed, and we couldn't get any footage at all. Fortunately between us, we managed to get the camera kit working and then what we did was left the camera without any rig in the water for a couple of days with food in the swim so we could actually film these fish getting their confidence up because they definitely got more confident the longer they were in the spot and certainly as you can see from now they're not camera shy at all. Now as is always the case the commentary you're going to get from myself and from Damien is just going to be our opinion on things. It's not the gospel, it's not the truth, it's just our slant on it. And you may watch it and think completely different things and fish a completely different way. And that's fine. That's what the films are for, is to spark some thought and some interest in people. And we're both convinced, Damien and myself, that there is a lot more that we can do to get more bites. We don't actually know what it is yet but we're pretty convinced that things will emerge as a result of these films which will put more fish on the bank. What we're going to do as well is swap back to some live commentary in the bivvy as this sort of stuff's happening because you can imagine how exciting it is to watch fish of this sort of size, upper 20s, low 30s, even upper 30s in the swim feeding. So we're going to bring you some of that live footage to give you a sense of just what it feels like to see it happening at that moment. One thing we noticed about the fish's behaviour, bearing in mind these are much, much bigger fish. That fish in the foreground there, we're estimating at 35 plus. The fish in the background is, a, is definitely an upper 20. And they're moving around the swim a hell of a lot slower than we've seen in the other films just being a lot more picky, taking more time. And we've noticed that different fish feed in different ways. If you pay particular attention to how much their mouths open, how clo close they are to the lake bed, that kind of thing. We think every fish has got its own unique way of feeding. They may only be very, very slight differences, but they are differences and they're things to look out for. What we think is that all the fish have got their own unique way of avoiding getting caught. Some are better at it than others, and these are probably the fish that don't get caught very often in the lake. We've basically fed the swim with a mixture of sticky baits, pellets, fusion boilies from mainline and also the proactive boilies from mainline. One thing we noticed and something you'll see later on in the film is the greater the competition for food, the more aggressively the fish feed. 
something we've all known before but it really does bring it home to you when you see one fish in the swim feeding and just being very careful and very slow and very picky and then you get four or five in the swim feeding and they're basically going for any bit of food they can possibly find see the fish there spooking off of a boilie we really think these fish are, are very very spooky of round baits and you'll see during the film that you know there are several times when they go down for the for a round boily and then avoid it at the last moment because after all they've been caught on round boilies for years and years and years. I think it's not the fact that they don't want to eat the food, it's the fact that they're scared of the shape of it. And that's why I think the pellets work so well because they break down and they change their shape and they break up. It's much harder for the fish to be aware of exactly what shape they are. Also, we never fish with tiny, tiny pellets on the hair. We've always got a boilie over the top, so they can feed on pellets generally and have no fear of getting caught. Well, I think we've given these fish a free lunch for long enough. It's time to get on with the job in hand, and that's make part five of state-of-the-art underwater carp fishing. Let's get a rig in the water. Welcome to part five of State of the Art Underwater Carp Fishing. My name's Danny Fairbrass and we're here at the fantastic Wellington Country Park and I've just got one thing on my mind and that's catching a 30 pounder in front of the camera. Now remember in all the other parts of the series we've had loads of bites in front of the camera, we've learnt loads of stuff but we haven't caught any really big fish. And I think everybody including me wants to know do they feed differently, do we need different rigs to catch them, am I going to have to change my approach? We've been here a few days now, we've had problems as we always have, on the first day we had all the camera equipment went down, we couldn't get any footage at all, we got the cameras in the water yesterday and those fish started to come in, they started to feed but very very delicately on the bottom, they moving very very slowly around the baited spot, they were picking up off bits of food but not really really having it. We put some more grub out last night and we've had one really big fish come back into the swim. So what I'm hurriedly doing now is putting the rod together, constructing a rig to suit the little clear spot we're fishing. And what I've done, I've shortened everything down. So I've shortened my hook link down, I've shortened all my anti-tangle systems and everything down because it's only a very, very small patch. So it all lies flat on the bottom. So I'm just going to get the rest of that rig put together. I'm going to put just a three and a half ounce flat line of pear lead onto a lead clip. We've noticed inline leads, we've had a chuck into the swim and we've noticed that inline leads bury into the bottom a little bit too much. Even though it looks gravelly over there and if you looked at it from the other side you'd think an inline would be perfect, they're burying into the bottom too much and the rig's sitting funny. So we've already tested that while there's no fish in the swim and I've just moved over to a swivel lead instead because that's going to allow everything to lie flat on the bottom. And I'm going to start with what I finished with in part four, and that's a very, very short braided hook link. I'm just going to attach that to my quick link, just so you can see that. I've put heavy metal along the whole rig, just to pin everything to the lake bed. And that basically is going to be the setup that I start off with. A short bit of tubing, much shorter than I normally use, a heavy flat lead, and then a very, very short braided hook link. We're going to put this one out first. And this is not really a film about testing lots of different rigs. It's all about catching a 30. So I'm going to put out what I think is going to be best to start off with. If they get away with it, then we're going to have to adjust things round and try more stuff to get a bite. But we're going to put this one out first of all. I'm going to make up a little stick mix first. Once the stick mix is done, that's going to get threaded onto the hook link to cover up the hook. It's going to go out over to that spot and we're hopefully going to get a big one in front of the camera. So I'm going to make up a stick mix now and then uh, we'll get this out in the water. Got a very, very fishy stick mix. Uh, basically in that I've put Sticky Bait's Bloodworm pellet, also their, their stick mix, the Sticky Bait stick mix, it's got bloodworm and stuff in it as well, which I've been using a fair bit. Into it I've added tuna and also sardines. Now the tuna's in brine and the sardines are in oil. I don't know if that's critical, but it's been working really well on other places that I've been fishing. So that's gone into there as well. And the fish just seem to love that, that really fishy smell and taste 
that's in that stick mix. And the, the way I got that was Frank Warwick used to use tuna in his, in his method mixes all the time. And he used to catch a lot of fish in it. And I thought, well, why not apply it to a stick mix? We tried it last year, caught a lot of fish on it. So that's the coarse end of the stick mix. And then the fine end is what I always use, the dynamite baits, meat and marine, and then dynamite, uh, amino black ground bait and in with that I'll put the mainline oil, the, the FOSS oil that basically makes it really 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 oily. I'm going to pull the hook into the fine bit and then that's going to get protected by the fine particles. It won't get pulled onto a large pellet and then once it's out on the bottom the whole lot melts. The vast majority of the stick mix is the fishy stuff, the cool stuff and hopefully that's going to attract the fish in and we're going to get a bite almost straight away. So I'm going to put that together now. Another new product that's literally just come out, we've mocked these up just for the filming, and that's the long chuck funnel web. It's a much smaller diameter than the boilie funnel web and that makes it easier to cast. And the reason we've brought this out is I do a lot of long range fishing in the winter and I always want to have a stick on the end. And with a boilie funnel web sticks, it does cut your distance down by maybe 10 or 20 yards if you're fishing at real extreme range. And by that I mean 130, 140, 150 yards with a PVA stick. Put one of these on and it cuts it down hardly at all. So that's why we've done the long chuck funnel web. It's a 15 mil diameter as opposed to 21 mil diameter of the boilie funnel web and that really does make a difference. So I'm just going to scoop up a little bit of the fine stuff, just a tiny bit. That's just going to mask the hook from the cool stuff. And then our compressor just really pushes that down tight. Just tighten up that PVA again. Okay, and then a little scoop of the cool stuff. Now I want, I've got a short braided hook link, only about a three inch braided hook link on, and I want the stick almost the length of the braided hook link. So I definitely know that braid's not going to tangle, because I only want to have one cast over to that spot. And there's our stick, nice oily stick. I'm using a four season PVA, the micro mesh PVA that we now do. So even when you use really, really oily sticks like this, it's going to melt in just a couple of minutes. So we just tie that in a double overhand knot as normal. You don't want to be making these ones up in advance because they're so oily because of the oil in the sardines and the extra mainline winter oil that I've put in there that they soak into the PVA really, really quickly and it can extend the melt time. And the way you put the sticks on is with one of these. It's a stick needle. It's a long needle, like a stringer needle, but it's got a gate on the end and that makes it easy to pull the loop back through the stick. So get our PVA stick, we go through the coarse end, you feel that pushing past pellets as that's going through, out the fine end, I'm just going to pull that out there, and then just loop on the hook link, fold the gate over, and then just drag the hook link back through, and then we'll just open up because it's micro mesh PVA, we'll just open up the hole at the end there. And we'll just pull the hook in so the hook's actually pulled into the end of the stick, like that. Hair just hanging out the bottom, and we put back on a little silicon sleeve which is going to cover up the quick link and then actually open the loop up and put it back onto our quick link like that and then a little bit of silicon just slides up over the top and that's it done so there's no way that hook link can tangle but the good thing about it for this type of fishing is when that melts the hook is going to be buried underneath all the stuff that's inside that stick. So the fish isn't going to see the hook straight away and I think that's very, very important when you're fishing in clear shallow water like this and the fish are very picky, the look of everything is very, very important. So that's what's going out first of all. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, so that's the whole point of the videos. But we're going to stick that one out first of all and see if we can catch a big one on it. 